How many of you pulling for the Bengals? How many of you don't care? How many pulling for the Rams? Most people don't care. I had a good friend buy two Ram tickets, man. Well, Super Bowl tickets. He's a Ram fan. $3,000 a ticket. Covers motel, hotel. Better be a hotel. Uh, food. You know, flying in and stuff. He had to buy it a while back. <laughs> and he didn't know that the Super Bowl landed on his wedding day. Today. So he's not going to make it. And if you're interested in taking his place, the wedding's today, 5 o'clock, right here. Her name is Donna, and she'll be in the white dress. <laughs> Women were like, wow, what's up, man? We are in this new vision series. I got a quiz for you. How many of you do want to know God more? Find a little more freedom? Discover a little more purpose? Make a difference? I want to say this. If you are going to know God, you got to know what God likes. Feel me on that. If you want to know God, you got to know what God likes. We have... Uh, uh, pretty much of a, a tradition. We're not very traditional around here, but one tradition we have is typically praying and fasting the first 21 days of the year. We did that January 1st through January 21st, and we had Seek Week, and then we had the Sound Conference. Why do you think we do that? We want to know God. Can I tell you what God likes? God likes when we seek Him. God likes when we set aside time to wait on him, to fast and pray. He loves us to come together in seeking his face and calling upon his name. If you're going to know God, you got to know what he likes. I like to take the time in the beginning of the year to kind of tune my life in with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Kind of tune. If you've got a Gibson guitar and it's $30,000, you still got to tune that thing in like every time you play it. You got to be in tune. It's like you can't just get tuned in one time a year, but it's a good time of the year to, to get in tune. It's, it's important that you are in tune because it brings you into unity with in step with the Holy Spirit and with the church. And, and it's, it's just, it's just, would you just play something in tune for me, cowboy? Yeah, that's in tune. Oh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then he, got, he went out of tune, right? See the difference? It's good to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. It's, it's good to be in tune with brothers and sisters in the church and step with the Holy Spirit. Put your hands together for the cowboy. Thank you. Thank you so much. He's about to turn 18, huh? When do you turn 18? Three days. Woo! Wow. Then he's going to be a stealer. Ha. No, I'm teasing. Just teasing. Just teasing. You know, David, Dave Carlson said something beautiful. He said the sound, when we were doing a retreat, he said the sound uh, wasn't just a place to land. It was a place to launch. And it's important that we understand that it's not a landing in the beginning of the year. It's a launching. If you think it's a landing and a launching, you think it's all one package, I got news for you. I'll probably really see you next January again. But if you understand the first 21 days is a beautiful launching for what he wants to do in your life, in our life, in our church as a corporate church. I want to read a, a beautiful scripture today. If you're, if you're going to know God, you got to know what he likes. Jeremiah 33 3 says this beautiful scripture. I, I, just, I just love this, this, this verse here. It says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. 
call to me. I can tell you right now, God loves for you to call to him. This is something that God likes. God likes us to call to him. He says, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. When, when that word talks about show in the, in the Hebrew, it's to make known. He wants to make known to you great and mighty things that you do not know. One of the things that I believe that God shows us when we call to him that is a great and mighty thing that sometimes we do not know is him. When we call to him, he shows us great and mighty things we do not know about him. I love what God told Abraham. He says, I am your shield. Man, it's not going to be some tank. I'm your shield an exceedingly great reward. It's not your job that's your exceedingly great reward. It's not your paycheck that's your exceed. It's not your degree that's your, come on. It's God that is your exceedingly great reward. And when you call out to him, he will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Not just January 1 through 21, but the remaining of the year. Not just seek week. But every morning when you wake up, there should be a seek in your heart for God, a passion and a thirst for him. He has great things for you, church. He has great freedom and, and great purpose and great destiny. Uh, all those, He wants to give you your heart's desire. But I tell you what, he will show you these things when you call out upon him. He will show you if you want to know God. You got to know what he likes. I, I like going on vacation, different things like that. Like, you know, I worked in the gym, love doing that. And God can tie all of those things into this purpose. But I got to be honest with you. I've been on vacations before and spent a lot of money and come back stressed out and wore out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can go to a seek week, seek God, wait upon him and get super refreshed. Yeah. I mean, I was super crazy refreshed after 21 days of fasting. <laughs> Call to me, and I'll show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Jude Foquay, a good friend of mine, matter of fact, in 93 we met. In one more year, it'd be 30 years. He said this, he said this, he said, by the way, all things don't work out good for everyone. You know how we love to use 828, you know, Romans 828, just play that card all the time. You go, work out. No, this is what the Bible says. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. <laughs> there is a relationship involved. There is a seeking involved. And it goes on to say, to those who are called according to his purpose. If you're going to find out what your purpose is, and by the way, it's God's purpose for your life. That's what brings, what brings more fulfillment to me than anything on the face of the earth is whenever I'm walking in God's purpose for my life. It's not your purpose for your life. Your purpose for your life, your purpose that you put on your own life can stress you out, wring you out, burn you out. But when you're operating in God's purpose for your life, it brings amazing benefits. I mean, refreshing, exciting it's, it's just amazing what God will do when you're operating in God's purpose for your life. Radine and I and Topher and Jamie and Jonesy, we got to do some vacation time here the last uh, 10 days or so. And we were in a beautiful place called Santa Barbara. You ever been there before, Santa Barbara? I'd never been there before. Oh, my goodness. This, woo, it's beautiful. And I've got some really good friends that gave us a gift certificate to this restaurant called Lark. I'd never heard of Lark in my life and didn't know what to expect. It was amazing, the flavors of it. But what was very unique is before we went to Lark, like the day before or two days before, I was seeking the Lord. And it was just like all of a sudden he decided to show me something great and mighty that I did not know. That I was going to have an encounter at the Lark. So I, I, I immediately assumed God can speak to you and then you can run with assumption. And I do that sometimes. So I immediately assumed, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an encounter with a waitress. And God immediately straightened that out. Like right now, bam. No, it's not a waitress. It's a waiter. Okay. Walked into the lark with 
my beautiful wife and two friends, and we sat down. And all of a sudden, as I walk in, I begin to remember what God was going to do. And then I'm like, okay, I can test the spirit. Let's see if it's a waiter. Waiter <laughs> walks right up to us. I go, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So I'm, I'm trying to have a conversation with my friend at the table, but I'm also having a conversation kind of like with God, just trying, okay, God, I'm... <laughs> and it, it can be a little distracting. You know, not him, but me trying to do, you know, I'm not a good multitasker type of guy, right? And all of a sudden, the, the, the dinner was amazing. It's like probably five star, and, and, and the waiter is there, and I go, hey, sir, man, I, I don't... I, I, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I says, I just want to let you know what took place. I felt like the Lord spoke to me that I was going to have an encounter. I feel like it's you. I think he directed me and said it wasn't going to be a waiter. It was going to be a waiter. And I feel like this is what God is speaking to me about you. And his name is Max. And if you're listening today, Max, I, I want to tell this story out of all complete due respect. Uh, we left Heart of the City Church on there. He's going to go online and listen to it and so forth and so on. And so I began to share with him. And I talked to him about that I'd like to pray for him. And he stopped right there. And he did something I'd never had happen ever in a restaurant before. Matter of fact, nobody. He says, can I be part of this? I've never been part of anything like this before in my life. And he stood there, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. We laid hands on him right there, and he just received, and he was just really, really touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I give all glory to God, but I want to let you know, when you call out upon God, he wants to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. And can I tell you something what else that God really, really, really loves and really, really, really likes? He likes the lost. He likes those that's never had an encounter with him. I can't imagine not praying. I don't know what, I would be a, 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 a basket case if I wasn't able to pray. And, 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 and to for, for that gentleman to experience that, God loves to touch the lost and those that haven't met him yet. He loves it. If you're going to know God, you have to know what he likes. I know what my wife likes. She likes tea. She likes devotions in her bed. She likes mornings for God. She likes the color gold. She likes to read a lot. She likes to write. She loves people. She loves to pastor people. She loves to reach out. She loves to watch sunsets. We've done it many times. She loves sunrises. Come on, she, she is a Jesus freak since the day that she's been born. I know my wife. I know the things that she likes. I know the things that my son Seth likes. He likes beards. He likes hats. He likes comfortable clothes, and he likes trucks. He likes his dog, Moses. He loves his wife, Micaiah, his son, uh, Jameson. Uh, he loves Lord of the Rings, like, whoa. A bit, of, a bit of Star Wars. He loves to read. These are things that I know that my son loves. See, if you are going to know someone, you got to know what they like. I know what my daughter likes. She likes the, the color yellow. She likes sunflowers. She likes coffee. She likes to act like a little girl sometimes. We were at Disneyland, and she was kind of like, wow, she's a mother but a little girl. We was at the zoo. She's a mother but a little girl, and she likes coffee. Did I tell you that she likes coffee? <laughs> she likes uh, shop at thrift shops and things like that, and, and she loves Jonesy and her husband Topher. She loves to worship. She, she loves, I mean, there's many things that if you're going to know someone, you got to know what they like. If you're going to really know God, you need to know what he likes. And I want to talk to you for a few minutes about what God likes. Yeah, he likes you to call on him. He likes you to wait on him. Yes, he wants you to seek him. There's other things that God likes. You need to know what he, if you're going to know God, you need to know what he likes. He likes a, a great spirit of a person. He loves a right attitude. He loves you to have great faith. He desires you to celebrate him. 
He loves you to rejoice over him. He loves you to have worship and praise toward him, high worship. He loves your hunger. He loves your thirst. He loves your passion for him. Psalms 100 says, Psalms is full of what he loves. The Bible says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. These are things that God loves. He loves joyful. He loves joy. He doesn't really like, which I see all the time. It's like, Christians, did you just suck on a lemon right before you came through the door? Yeah. I'm going to hit the lemon, then I'm going to go to church. That's not what God likes. No, you need to listen to me. Dudes, guys, you think that being a man is just like in worship, just like, what's up? Where did you learn that? It wasn't from the Bible. Not here. It wasn't from David, a man after God's own heart. Where'd you learn that? It's got to be from the world. You can be the manliest man in the world and go crazy for Jesus. And stop hitting the, stop hitting the lemons. He loves gladness. He loves smiling. He loves singing. He loves raise a hallelujah. Come on. He loves a sound. You know that sound? You know that word? It means splitting the ear. You don't like loudness? Well, God does. He likes loudness. Split the ear? That's pretty loud. It's not about make a sober, sad noise, whining, complaining, bearing religious, mourning, groan, work with God with great despair and pain and graveling and That's not what the Bible says. You need to sometimes put some faith on your face. Tell your neighbor right there, put some faith on your face. Now tell yourself, put some faith on your face. Make a joyful noise, all you lands. Come on. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with song, with singing. That's what God loves. There's a song. You shouldn't listen to it, but, but this is the only good part of the whole song. This is how we do it, do it. This is how we do it. Don't listen to nothing else of that song. But that part of that song is good because this is how us believers do it. This is how we do it. This is what God likes. Another thing that God likes is he likes to be the Lord of your life. He wants to be the king of your life. He doesn't want to be your buddy. And not just your homeboy. It's important how you represent God. Ask Moses. You go ahead and hit on the rock the wrong way. The Bible says, know that the Lord, he is God. Know that the Lord, he is God. We love, charismatic love this scripture right here. Uh, uh, there, where, the, where, the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we love, this is what we like. I'm going to tell you what charismatics like. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We like freedom, freedom, freedom. We got freedom in the house, freedom. We like, but we forgot what it said in the beginning. Where the spirit of the Lord. Whoa. There's so many people that don't experience the freedom because he's not the Lord of your life. If you want true freedom, he has to be the Lord. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, not ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. You need to know that he's God and you're not. Stop acting like you're God. He's Lord, you're not. He's the king, you're not. He's not the president that you voted in and now you want to vote out or whatever at any time, at any time in history. Come on, he's God. He's Lord. He wants to be the Lord of your life. Jesus be the center of it all. 
Jesus be the center of it all. Not just on the side. He wants to be the very center of your life 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days. He wants to be the center of it all in your work, in your marriage, in your children, in every aspect of your life. He wants to be the center. That's what the Lord is. He is God. He is Lord. And he doesn't settle for anything else. American Christianity to me is like sometimes like checking little boxes off. And I'm going to give you a list of boxes, and every one of these are good boxes. But he's more than a stinking check on your Apple phone. Like, oh, paid my tithe. Did my devotions today. Prayed a little bit. Donated some clothes. Worked out to the... You know, food bank, and, and we get like checking boxes. And after we get through checking our boxes off, oh, I feel good. And then, kind of like forgetting the rest of the day, he's not a, he's not a check, yo. Jesus be the center of it all. He wants to be the Lord and the King. And the God of every moment of our life. Are you with me today? Yes. He is God. We sheep. He made us. We did nothing. He owes us nothing. We owe him everything. Things that God doesn't like. He doesn't like other little G gods. There was a time in history where the Philistines actually captured the Ark of God. <laughs> that just cracks me up, Indiana Jones. You don't spit in the wind. You don't take the mask off the Long Ranger. And you don't mess with the Ark of God. That's his presence. And the Philistines capture the Ark of God, and they're like, Oh, what did we do? They capture the ark of God and they're like, okay, uh, we'll, we're going to put him in a temple beside one of our pagan crazy gods. They set the ark of God, 1 Samuel chapter 5, into the temple of Dagon. They set him in there. They check on him in the morning. The next morning, guess where Dagon is? He's on the floor, face down. Dagon it. They set Dagon back up. Better check on Dagon again. Next morning, walk in there. Where's Dagon? On the face, facing forward to the ark. Little head snapped off. Little wrist snapped off. Dig on it. God doesn't like little G gods. He wants to be the Lord of all. King of kings. Are you feeling me today? He's the God. He put tumors all over them. I know you're like, oh man, that doesn't, I, you know, I just want a fair God. I just, I just need him to be fair. He's God. And he can do whatever he wants in heaven. He's sovereign. He's almighty. He's all powerful. And he can do whatever he wants to do. And the Philistines are like, oh my goodness, how are we going to, what are we, how are we going to get rid of this ark? And we're going to get back to that in just a few minutes. I want to show you a little bit about what they did. But I want to go back to the, I want to go to the next verse. Look at this right here. Look at what he likes. Verse four, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Will you say that with me? Thanksgiving. God loves Thanksgiving. Can somebody say thank you? Can you say this with me? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say it with me. Thank you, Jesus. Not let it come out of your heart. Thank you, God. Well, he loves Thanksgiving. It's like a password, man. It's like a secret code. If you want to walk right through the courts, right into the gates, right past everything, right into the Holy of Holies. Come on, he likes Thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with Thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Bless his holy name. That's, he loves that. 
He loves a thankful heart, not a weeny little whiny heart. He likes thankfulness. He likes us to cultivate thankfulness. Do I always feel thankful every day? No. Do I always feel like coming and praising God and worship? No. But it's like, wow, I know what I need to do. I need to be thankful. I need to cultivate an attitude of thankfulness in my heart because I wouldn't even be here sucking air if it wasn't for God. In him I live and move and have my being. It's his, it's his breath that keeps me alive. His heart that keeps me beating. Come on. It's all about him. He loves a thankful heart. If you're going to know God, you need to know what he likes. If you're going to know your wife, you better know what she likes. If you're going to know your children, you better know what they like. If you're going to have a relationship, know what they like. Back to the ark. So a book later, 2 Samuel 6, David wants to bring the ark of God into the city of David. And David does something. I love David. He's my, he's my man other than Jesus. He's my, he's my next in life. I love David. I, I'm a Psalms fanatic. And David did, it won't be the first time, he did something kind of stupid. In 2 Samuel 6, he takes the ark of God, you should read it, and he puts it on a cart. You don't put the ark of God on a cart. You know who put the ark of God on a cart? Go back one book, 1 Samuel 6. The Philistines are like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We've got tumors all over us. We're dying. It's going to kill us. Get this thing out of here. They make a new little trailer, you know, put some cows to it, stick the ark on it, kind of smack them on the butt, get out of here. And then David, it looks like he makes this new cart copying a pagan nation. So God, I'm telling you, God doesn't like that. I think God is already a bit upset about this cart thing. And then the cart takes off, the oxen stumbles, use a touches the ark say this with me can't touch that that. say it with me again you can't touch that bro there's certain things you can't you can't touch the ark of god oh here we go again uh god needs to be fair needs to be fair no he needs to be god you touch the ark of god you're going to get smoked use a smoke scares the snot out of David. David is fearful. He's upset. He goes and sets the ark at Obed Eden's house. Guess what happens at Obed Eden's house? The place gets blessed. Blessed, blessed. You want the presence of God in your house, church. You want the you want to be blessed. You want the presence of God in your house. You want the presence of God in your house. Obed Eden was being blessed. David's like, I'm going to get the presence of God. I'm going to get the ark. And he does it differently this time. He's like, not going to put it on a new cart. We're going to carry the ark. If you watch how the ark was created in the beginning, it was always created to carry. We're to carry the presence of God. Not put it on a pagan cart pulled by cows. And then he would take six steps. One, two, three. Sacrifice. Shoo. Sacrifice, shoo, carrying the presence of God, bringing it into the city of David. And then look what David, he began to do. He's like, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David dance. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David dance. I will dance. I don't know how he was dancing, but he was dancing. And he was ushering in the presence of God. And there was trumpets. And there was sounds. And there was dancing. And there was music. And they were ush. This is what, listen. You come to Heart of the City Church. That's the kind of church we are. We're a people after God's own heart. We're going to usher in the presence of God. J.O., we didn't do that at our other church. You ain't at your other church. (laughs)
I love you, but you ain't at your other church. The Bible says the traditions of man makes the word of God of no effect. We're going to always do it like we always did it. And where did that get you? We're not going to put God's presence on a new cart. We're going to carry God's presence. If you want to dance, cut a little rug. We want to bless the name of God at Heart of the City Church. If you're going to know God, you got to know what he likes. Let me finish this today. Verse 5. For the Lord, he is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Now, I know he smote Yuza, and I know he did some smoking, some guys, a husband and a wife, and acts. But at the end of the day, God is kind. He is merciful. Listen, if he wasn't merciful, I would already be smoked. He's super merciful. I'm here today because of his amazing grace and his kindness, his tender mercies that are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithful. Come on. He's kind. He's good. Look what it says. His his mercies is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Say that with me, all generations. We are a pipeline church at Heart of the City Church. We believe in people walking with Jesus all the days of their life. They don't have to turn 20 and lose their mind. You may have some kids, 20, 21, lost their mind. We're praying for them to come back, but that's not what our goal is, man. We want to see them in the pipeline of Jesus, walking with him, junior high, senior high, young adults. Come on, 20s, 30s, 60s, 70s, 90s. Come on. His truth endures to all generations. His truth endures to all generations. Where do we get God's truths from? How do I know what God likes? His word. I said it in the other gatherings. For me to say, well, God's word is true. It sounds so soft these days because that truth over there, and they got their truth over here. They got, let, me say, let me go a little deeper with God's word today. God's word is the truth of all truths. God's word is where all truth is based out of. It's not just a truth. It is the truth. It endures to all generations. So if I want to know God, and if I want to know what he likes, I'm going to call on him. He's going to show me great and mighty things that I do not know. I'm going to stay in his word. Because in his word, he's going to reveal his truths to me like never before. I encourage you, church, every person here, find out what God likes. If you're going to know him, you're going to have to really know what he likes. Somebody may have told you a long time ago he likes this, and he's like, eh, I just don't know if I really like that. I don't know if I just like you to be frozen and chosen in church. I don't know if I'd just like you to be quiet in church and and just. We go to his word to find out what God really likes. Amen.